Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Spiritually Simple. And today I am extremely fortunate and excited to have Lisa Wetzel on my show. She is an Akashic Record consultant. And so what Lisa does is she taps into the Akashic field that pertains to you, brings information forward to help bring you some clarity, some understanding, and some peace of what could be happening now in your world. So welcome, Lisa. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me, Sandra. Oh, you're so welcome. All right, let's get this, let's, let's get this party rolling here. <laughs> let's so, do it. In really simple terms, because so many people, Akashic, Akashic, Akash, you know, what is what is the Akashic Records? And just keep it simple for people so they can understand what your understanding of it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going to keep it simple because it's actually, they're a lot more in depth than what a simple exclamation I can't say S. Well, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't say the word. It's explanation. not <laughs> explanation. Thank you. Please help me. <laughs> explanation. But what what the Akashic field is, is it's a field of energy that guide us. It holds all the memories, all of the events, everything that's past, present, and future. And, you know, what, what it's always um, described as, it's basically like it's a computer base. You know, it holds, it holds everything, but it's much more than that. Um, the Akashic field has guides and, you know, specific positions that are held with the guides knowledge that help us to understand what we need in order to move forward and stay to our contracts and the agreements and live out the purpose that's meant for us and for our soul's growth. And so the Akashic field is more than just an, ener an energy field that, that holds the past, present, and future. Um, there's a lot more to the dimensions of what it exists within. And that's that's why it's a little bit harder to give a short, brief explanation. But basically what it is, it's it's our guiding source. And literally, it's the source of all information and it connects with the soul to keep us on track and make sure that the soul completes its journey. Okay, so it's it's a record keeper. You know, sometimes I've been in past life regression sessions and a, and a group of guides will come in and I can see them. And one will always be holding a book. So I always would equate, oh, that's my book of my life. That's my records, you know, kind of thing. So it's so much more than that because it's beyond a physical book. It's beyond a computer system or a program within that system. It is, it is so beyond in a universal way of recording, not only what's happening in the universe, but what your thread is within that universe, which would be your personal Akashic record. Would that be about right? It is. Um, I do want to, um, you know, some of these things that are misrepresented, you know, about the Akashic records, you know, you mentioned a book and holding that book and that's kind of like a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people recognize or have this idea or had experience of going into the library, the light, you know, the Akashic records, if you go online and you look up images, it's always associated with library and books and there are no books. It's not a library, it's an energy field. And so what, what we see, what individuals see when they see those images is the human construct of, of what that is. And so what, what you're saying is your, is your personal thread to the Akashic field. Yes, there is one. We all have our, there, I have my records open right now. I'm hearing they're divine beings that are connected specifically to the soul's resonancy. And what we want you to understand is, they're jumping in, sorry. What we want no, you please. to understand is that the agreement that the soul has with universal consciousness is one. And what we want you to understand is that our source of information, our, our ability to provide guidance to all creates the consistency, the flow of what is needed in order to create what is meant to happen. So not only is do they have the information to my specific history, my specific field of energy, and yours, 
they hold everything to make sure that everything works synchronistically. You know, so when we see something, you know, like we we can look back and we can see how things have unfolded, but we also recognize that certain people had to come into our lives to create an outcome, recognize that there was that guide, the Akashic Masters, that hold the information to make sure that all of the people, all of the individuals, all the situations were unfolding as needed. So each person completes its their mission to serve their soul. So it's a huge, vast, complex field of energy that helps to coordinate and keeps things going the way that it's meant to unfold for the future events. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that outcome could be good, bad, or indifferent. You may see it and judge it in that moment. Let's just say, oh crap, why did this happen and that happen? And and so on and so forth. But it could be so that you you put yourself on another path or you stop a pattern that has been consistent. And that was one of your lessons that you asked to learn and you hadn't learned it up till now. So you kind of needed to trip and they need to bring some people in there to get you to sort of trip without hurting yourself too badly so that you could pick yourself up and decide, you know what, I'm not going to waddle in this. I'm going to brush myself off and I'm going to get some more clarity with this because this isn't working for me. Mm -hmm. And you can recognize it as an old pattern possibly. Mm -hmm. And an old belief system. Yes. You know, and which, you know, which, which can happen is that, you know, we have this belief system that if everything doesn't run the way that we think that it should, and it gets a little uncomfortable that it's something that's bad. And if we can recognize letting go of that, what we think things should be, what we think the outcome should be, what we think is comfortable, then we can recognize that letting go of those belief systems creates the opportunity to go more with the flow and the rhythm of what's meant to be. And it creates more peace, creates more harmony, and everything kind of falls and fits together the way they're supposed to without us creating our own chaos due to our belief systems. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying that, I'm seeing the picture of like, you know, we're brought up on television and radio, at least in my era, it all came very, very apparent, more television, more television, more social media, till here we are now in 2024. And it, they were just showing me, like, it's time to change the channel, but the channel really isn't a channel. It's going to be a channel to multi channels. And there's no more of this little mini programming that's been going on that has been passed down to how you think things should be or are supposed to be, and you stay in that cement construct of that and you don't know how to get out of it because it's a mental fixation. Right. That sound yeah. about right? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yeah. Yeah, um, I've worked with Lisa before you guys, she's amazing and she <laughs> will look away as she is is getting messages or visions or, or, or see something and feeling something. Um, so uh, if you notice that she's just kind of, doing that. But the way I work is if anyone's watched my work or whatever, I kind of blend in with the energy and then I can bounce off of that. So I don't mm -hmm. have a whole lot of preset things before I do shows like this. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, accuracy. So when you tap into someone's Akashic record, how do you know that you're not in their identical twin or you're in their lifetime from, you know, 4 billion years ago and, and, and it looks like it's present, you know what I mean? How, mm -hmm. how do you figure this out? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. It's not that difficult, believe it or not. Um, I do better when people ask me questions. Um, if the, if the person just says, tell me the message that I need to know, then I'll have the information that comes to me and I'll repeat that information that comes from the guides and a message like that. It's not, um, you know, it's not time sensitive, you know, it's not, doesn't depend on whichever lifetime it's the present moment. And so typically, unless I ask to go back to a specific time, it's the current time. It's where we are today and right now. And that's what they focus on. If the question is, is directed to something like a past life, um, a common question that I have is what past life 
is affecting me the most in this particular lifetime. Then they'll take me back to those lifetimes that are affecting the the person who or the client is at that time. Um, when we talk about accuracy, I'm not going to say they're 100% accurate. I'm not going to say that they're accurate at all. You're the one that knows. You're the one that knows that it fits. Um, I just repeat the information. I So the reason I'm glad that you mentioned that I look away or close my eyes because I'm a channel. And if I look at you or look around, then my mind kicks in. And when my mind kicks in, it can distort the information or I can lose it. So I'm trying to stay in that that form of energy that's coming to me. And so for me, it's it's easier to shut my brain off and just let it flow through. And I, I'm not going to say that I'm 100% accurate, again, because I'm just repeating the words. When I say that information to you or to whoever, not you specifically, to the client, you know, then they're the ones that confirm, yeah, this is exactly right. Yeah, I understand this. If I might say something like, you know, you have a creative a ta a talent and you like to bake, I'm seeing a baker. Yes, I love to bake. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat it. Um, I, I've had very good feedback in saying <laughs> that, that the information is very accurate. I've actually even repeated things, said things, and I was like, holy cow, where is this coming from? And then the person, on <laughs> the client will be saying, yeah, that's exactly right. And I'll be saying to myself, holy cow, really? <laughs> so, you know, it's, I just repeat. And, you know, I, I feel like the information is it's pretty on on spot. I'm I actually my human mind is even surprised sometimes how accurate it is. Well, you know, you're the messenger and we have to be detached from the messages. It's mm -hmm. it's for them to hear and however they want to concentrate it or dilute it or completely have control and turn away from it. You know, I've mm -hmm. I've been dabbling in um Oh my gosh, you know, sure, read my palm. Yeah, okay, let's do the cards. Let's do this. I've been doing this for decades because I, I am very inquisitive mm -hmm. about life. But there's so many people that I know that will go and have something done. They'll go, oh my God, they were full of crap. None of that ever happened. Well, people have to understand that sometimes they will get in their mind and they'll get a lot of rigidity. Yeah. And then they'll turn the corner in an opposite direction and then blame it that that didn't happen on the person that delivered the message mm -hmm. versus their own participation and whether they just allowed the information to flow. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting that you brought this up because a lot of the information that's presented is it does depend on the person that's receiving the information. Um, if you walk into a situation and you have your guard up, so I have people that come to me and they're testing me. And they want to ask the um, the broadest question that they possibly can. And they sit back with their hands folded like, yeah, tell me whatever this means. Mm -hmm. And immediately they put a wall up. There's the blockage. You know, if you come in with an attitude of I'm testing you, I want to see what you have to say, then that's already going to distort the information. If, you know, if they take you back, so my guides have, they have a different way of speaking. If they don't, you know, talk like you and I do, they talk obviously in English, but their format and the way that they say things can be a little bit hard to understand sometimes. And so you may be perceiving my message the way that you're conditioned to with your belief systems, with your filter. But the way that I'm receiving the information, I may be receiving it and saying it in a different way than how you're interpreting it. And that happens quite a bit. And I'll have somebody say, you know, well, this is what you were saying. And I was like, no, that's not exactly what I was seeing. So let's dig into and figure out how to make this more clear for you and how you can truly understand what's being said and what the message is. And a lot of times I'll go back to a situation that goes to their, a person's childhood. Well, I don't remember my childhood. Okay, well, let's, let's focus on this and let's start figuring out 
who and what these players are that you may have shut down to. So let's start figuring this out. We may have to lit, dig a little bit deeper for the person to actually really understand what's being said. So if I'm providing information and you, the client, doesn't communicate with me and you know, I, I try to have an open conversation with my clients so that we can go back and forth to make sure that you do understand what's being said. So you don't walk away and say, that's that was completely inaccurate. That's not the way that it is at all. And so I've also learned that for me, anything that may be said about the future, I don't hold on to. I don't wait for it to happen and then five years down the road say, well, this never happened. Well, it may be going to happen in the next two years. You know, you be careful about how you judge things and you put um, your own constraints on things or your own interpretation from where your mind is at that particular time, because we do have a way of of changing. I mean, you know, the old saying, we can't even have a conversation with somebody misunderstanding you know, what's being said. And so so it's important to be able to, whoever's assisting you in this format, you know, whether it's tarot cards or psychic reading or mediumship, to be able as the recipient to have that communication back and forth to make sure that you understand and you're interpreting the information correctly so you don't walk away and feel like you didn't get what you were th what you were hoping for. Well, I think the other two, the other thing that's coming to mind for me is that many people come in with just using their mental sensory. Absolutely. Instead of feel, instead of feeling into it, or allowing the other sensories maybe to pop up and and um, have some kind of understanding to retrieve and receive the information, and then not have a judgment and immediately push it away. So I think that's helpful. People can understand that before they come to sessions is, Hey, this is information that could be totally helpful and totally enlightening, or I can go into it, like, show me, prove it to me. You know, yeah. we have a lot in common. Um, you know, both of one of our launch pads was massage therapy, yeah. you know, in massage therapy, you started, I started, and then things just kind of happened from there. And I, I could say that I know people that come in, yeah, that shoulder's been a problem since, you know, I was, you know, you're never going to get that out, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And I didn't, I never came from the stance where watch me, you yeah. know, and I'm going to dive into it and work my elbows and be exhausted at the end of that session. It would be, it would work better if we could both participate. Mm -hmm. If you could relax enough and breathe and then. I can come in and do this. So same thing with your sessions. If you could yeah. relax and allow the and, and expand the possibilities because you're there because you're curious. Yeah. You want yeah. to know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you, lately I've been really, you know, I don't listen to the news and I don't, I don't listen to a lot of things and a lot of people for, for many decades now because it's very cumbersome to my nervous system. It actually strangles my life force. I feel like. But, you know, the world stage is playing out so that we can break and dissolve some of these programs. And maybe break isn't the right word, but we have to shatter some of the old perceptions. Mm -hmm. And I've always been shown that you are the only commander of this vessel. And in order to understand how to work the exterior, you've got to learn how to operate the interior. Mm -hmm. So what would the Akashic Records say to that, to people who are out here just absorbing the world stage and allowing it to really be their only perception of how they see things mm -hmm. and then fight against it yeah. if it doesn't resonate? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to ask them just to provide a message pertaining to what's currently happening with happening with the chaos. Is that the question? Perhaps? Kind of, sort of, Yes. Okay. Do you have, do you want to narrow the question down and be more specific? Well, in order to be a collective, we have to be individuals. So how would we empower an individual to step more into themselves and using their reservoirs of internal wisdom 
versus the programs and the chaos externally that's dictating a lot of the same Groundhog Day. Yeah, um, they're saying recognize that each individual is meant to be a separate species from one another. What we want you to understand and recognize is that each individual that is upon the earth at this particular time is is put has been put here in order to change consciousness. What we want you to know is that the chaos that has been occurring for the past 12 years is has meant to be meaningful and purposeful in order to break the old constructs of what have been created. What we want you to understand is that the, the masters and the guides of the universal capacity has created the opportunities for, for individuals to tap into their own knowing and their own truth and recognize how, that they, ha how they have been conditioned and programmed to become separate from one another and yet still a whole as one. And so what I'm seeing is that, you know, we look at ourselves as separate and that if you don't believe like me, then you're not part of me. This is where we are today. If we don't all agree on the same thing, then you're the enemy. So, but we've also been created to, well, if you think like me, then you're my family. If you think about me, then we're all one. We're the ones that are united. And so it's the point that we've been created, pushed away from each other, but then also put in a tribe. And so what's happening is that we, we're being put in the position to really look at who we are and what we've been created to be. So the way that I I always see it is that, you know, this 5D energy, this high vibrational energy is, is, it's on earth, it's here, but it's being amplified by things like the way that the planets are being arranged, the solar flares, the eclipses, you know, all of these things that are happening that are really ramping us up. But what's, what the universe is doing is creating the understanding of how we need to look at our belief systems and how it's causing us pain, misery, sorrow, and how it's separating us from each other. But more than anything else, it has created the separateness of who we are as spiritual beings. And so this energy that's coming in, this, this beautiful, loving, caring energy that's coming in, we're absorbing it. And as it's coming in, we're kind of walking this tightrope of, but here are all the, the little head, the voices in my head that are saying, I'm supposed to be like this. I'm supposed to act like this. And we've been conditioned for centuries, you know, different classes. You know, you're not significant if you don't make a certain income, if you don't have a certain job, you're insignificant if you believe this way. All of these things, if you don't dress like you're supposed to, you know, what society would accept, this is all programming. And so this is where I see this dividing line is. And so as this high energy is coming in, we're getting glimpses of oh my gosh, what if I could stand in this place of love? Oh my God, what if I could love myself? Oh my gosh, what if I could live in peace? What if it was just like I could take a deep breath and not care what anybody else thought? What if I could really be who I want to be or who I am internally without the fear of judgment? And so we get these glimpses of this 5D energy and it's coming in and it's pushing against that old 3D energy that old heavy, dense energy that creates all of this, this pain and discomfort, the anxiety and all of that. And so it's like, we're going back and forth to where it's like, oh, this feels so good, but no, I have to live over here. What if I stayed over here? It would be so great. It, you can't do that. You have to fit in society. You have to be accepted. Oh, but I wanna be here. No, and so we're going back and forth. And these stories that we keep hearing about people talking about the chaos that's happening, not only, I mean, I don't think myself, I don't believe that there's it's as much chaos on the surface as the chaos is being created within ourselves. We are creating the own battle. We are the ones that are fighting. Can I go in this place of being free or do I have to stay in this place of being restricted? And so where we are now is, I call it the push me, pull me. And trying to figure out well, can I let go of this belief system that's keeping me confined? 
okay, I, I believe I can let my mother's voice go away. Mm -hmm. I can, I can let these little small things go away that are holding me confined to certain belief systems that keep me restricted, that don't allow me to, to be my true self, you know, that I may want to eat ice cream for dinner, but somebody says I can't, well, I'm going to eat ice cream for dinner and I don't care. You know, it's these little things that are, are being pushed out gradually but we as humans are holding on so tight that it's causing the conflict within us. And so all of these events that are occurring around us, politically, you know, globally, all of these things, this discord is basically to help us to look at ourselves. Do I really agree with hate and anger? Do I really agree with feeling that somebody's not good enough? Do I even really agree that I'm not good enough? Do I, do I feel that there's something wrong with me? So everything that's around us is for us to absorb so that it will trigger these old belief systems to come to the surface so we can really look at them and analyze them. Mm -hmm. And then once we do, if we're willing to let it go, then the more this beautiful love light energy will come in. And then the goal is to be that light to be that love, to live in a place of peace and consciousness without having this conflict. And that's where we're moving to. And that's why it's so crazy right now, because the universe is literally, I always see they're, they're breaking us down. And it's like getting the rug ripped out from, from us. So where we're sitting on our knees on the ground saying, I need help. I can't do this anymore. What's it gonna take for you to actually really look at your life and recognize what needs to change and how do you want to change it? Do you want to continue living in this pain and sorrow or do you want to move to a different, a different way of living that's peace and happy? So universe says, we're going to make you look at this. And if it takes breaking you to the point of asking and recognizing, then we will do that. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are. Well, that makes total sense. And, you know, many conversations I've had this week are people that have been on this journey of, of wanting to live their life more in a 5D way, but we're in a 3D world. Yeah. There's no reason why you can't have them both, yep. right? Yep. Um, your job is a 3D job, but you could bring your 5D energy to it, yeah. which would excel and expand so much more and emanate so much more love, harmony and peace and the things that you want to see in this world. But then there's a lot of people who are living in that solo. I'm alone because I've gone against my family's beliefs or I've done this or I've done that in the last five years, that's been quite obvious. And they're proud of themselves for doing it, but then they'll see pictures of their families or they'll get ridicule from someone and it brings back those hurt and those wounds or well, I want to be back there, but then I don't want to be back there. But then I want to throw out a lot of FUs on why I'm where I am. And yeah. then we get the world stage, right? Mm -hmm. And people don't take enough time to step back and get in the commander seat and become the captain of this yeah. energetic dome and say, you know what? I'm not so sure. I actually believe with any of those people say, so why am I contributing? Why am I mm -hmm. being a contributor financially with my thoughts, with my energy? Why am I even contributing? Why am I reading that? Why am I mm -hmm. allowing that into my, my domestic domain? Yeah. And so I think what I'm hearing from your message is we need to take more time to step back, connect with nature and the nature of oneself. Yeah. And then allow the control dials to sort of acclimate and harmonize to a different way of how you want to portray yourself as an individual. And then I guarantee you, you're going to find more other people out there that would like to do the same thing. It just takes one person to step out of that crazy. Yeah. Well, and you know what I've always seen this, I mean, for years, I've seen this, this shift happening, occurring, you know, when it began the whole thing and watching this evolution and, you know, we, we, the ones that are really in the midst of all of this chaos are, we, I, I've always been called that it's the first wave. 
we are the first wave of, of humans to go through this shift. And so because of that, nobody's ever done this before. So it's really leaving people confused and not knowing which way to go and should I, shouldn't I. But they also don't have a support system around them to move through this because we've never done this before. We're all just holding each other's hand going, holy cow, what's going to happen tomorrow? <laughs> you know, where, where are we? And, you know, what, how is all this going to unfold? So being able to go inward and stand in the truth of who you are right now is what I see is that individually we need to shift and change ourselves. When we can really truly find that place of peace that resides within when, within us, then we become the teachers. We are the change makers. And so, like you said, in order to live in a 3D world, we're surrounded by that energy. And so us, the way showers, have to stand strong with who we are. So there's a point where we do kind of have to step away from the chitter chatter and the the news and all of this stuff that's bombarding us saying right or wrong or whatever. Okay. You guys go play with you. You guys go do that. At this point, I have to work on myself. I've got to find me. I have to live with me and my soul. My soul chose me to live on this earth at this particular time. So I'm going to get connected to it. And I'm going to create a place of peace that resides within me so that when I step out into the, the world, the this 3D world, that won't affect me anymore. You know, and we're going through these times. I talk to people over and over and over again. I feel like I want to be in solitude. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to go to a restaurant. I don't want to be around this energy. Well, congratulations, because that means you're in the midst of this change. And then once we get integrated and we can stay in our own energy, then we will go out to the restaurants. We will go to the office. We will be surrounded by people that are having these struggles. And all we have to do is just be as our energy emanates from us and then it's absorbed. And then it allows for individuals to see that, oh my gosh, this is possible. We can do this. But for us right now, holy cow. Has it been easy? No, <laughs> not, not at all. Friendships ending, relationships ending, jobs ending. I hear it all the time. You know, what direction? I'm not happy anymore. I want to go. I want to know what direction I need to go. What is my true calling? You know, so we're getting to these points where we're becoming really uncomfortable to make these shifts and changes, but it's uncomfortable to make those shifts and changes, you know, to let go of friendships that you may have had for 20 or 30, 30 or more years and seeing that you're evolving to something different and you don't want to be in that energy anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's also to that point of owning who we are and accepting who we are in order to move forward. Well, you are talking my language, sister. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Yeah. We have to embody ourselves embody the soul acknowledge the soul acknowledge the the cellularness of the physical mental spiritual etheric emotional bodies and let go of all the nonsense that doesn't serve it yeah. you know when you're going to start a new diet you don't eat the shit that's in your refrigerator <laughs> no you clean it out and you begin to prepare yeah. and it's time consuming yeah. And it can seem laborious at first and it can seem boring and your taste buds want to reject it because they want to go back to what was in there because mm -hmm. that was tastier, but you're developing a higher, healthier lifestyle for yourself. So it takes due diligence. It takes intention. Intention takes action. Mm -hmm. And so we have to sit back and, you know, you want to rejuvenate. you got to retreat a little bit. You're going to work out hard. You got to have a day of rest. Yeah. Right. You can't yeah. keep running hard 24 seven before there's going to be a burnout. And we are all right now, I think, facing global, individually and collective burnout. And it's mm -hmm. really there from what I'm hearing you say to present a better outcome. Yeah. Yeah. So to yeah. those individuals who because you have to start individually, you cannot control what your brothers and sisters are doing. Yep. You cannot control any of that. Only you can pick up, pick it up and clean up your messes, mm -hmm. you know? And 
So what would you say to someone who is like, I'm sort of there, but I'm, I, I don't really know what steps to take. Mm -hmm. So um, are you referring to like letting go of actions of others? Letting go of what, you know, how do I detach myself from all these things, mm -hmm. all these suction cups of lifetimes of stuff, yeah. current affairs, and let go of them so that I can have some sort of resonance of a glimmer of peace so I can build upon that. You have to be willing to first. And I hate to use this word because the old ego, you know, so a lot of the times where we find ourselves holding on to wanting to get involved in other people's lives. You know, it's, I, you know, it's, I always look at this, you know, whenever, like, if you go to lunch with a friend, what is the first thing you ask your friend, how you doing? And we immediately expect them to say, oh, woe is me. This is what happened to me today and blah, blah, blah. And so then we get pushed, put into, we get pulled into that story and that, that way of thinking. And so if we continue that pattern of getting pulled into other people's stories and wanting to fix them or wanting to help because, you know, I was told or conditioned that in order to go to heaven, then I have to sacrifice myself for others. I have to save them. And so until we stop that pattern and so until we quit, putting ourselves in the position of worrying about others or, you know, trying to fix them or trying to control their lives, then it will constantly stay in that position until we choose to step back and be able to recognize just a minute, I got to work on me right now. So I'm going to put this little barrier up. You're going to stay on the outside. We're going to have this conversation, but I'm not going to absorb it. I'm just going to be here and I'll be the sounding board, but I'm not going to take it in and try to fix it, change it, or, you know, whatever, give you the solution for it. And so where we are as humans is that we are conditioned to always be in other people's lives. There, at some point, we're always, we've always been taught that, you know, either you have to act a certain way, but they have to act a certain way. They have to make choices and decisions. They should do this. They should do that, whatever. So it's really hard for our human nature to step back and be an observer and not be in the middle of it. And so where we can find our the most peace that is within each one of us is to be able to cut those cords and allow that person to go through whatever's meant for them. I'll be here and I'll love you and I'll support you, but I'm not going to fix you and I'm not going to absorb your problems. You're going to have to do that on your own. So developing that separateness that brings me down is extremely important to stay whole and one. And I always see this as the Buddha energy. And where we are is it's not the religious Buddha, but it's the Buddha of enlightenment where we go inward and find our connection to our universe, our soul, our spirit. And we stay true to who we are without pulling everybody else in. And that is a huge unraveling because we've been so conditioned through lifetimes of sacrificing ourselves to make sure that other people are pleased. I have to do this because that's what they expect of me. Or I they have to do this because this is what I expect of them. Letting go of all these belief systems is huge. And it's a process in catching yourself continually doing these little things by judging something. I don't like what she's wearing. So I'm going to put a, a label on her and do that and recognize it doesn't matter what she's wearing. She's happy. You be you, you stand, you stand within your own self, your own love and your own light. And the more that we can do that, get into that Buddha state, the more that others will recognize that they can do it too. And I'm not sure that even answered your question, but apparently I went no, on a little roll. No, it came, it came through and it's being, it's being heard. Okay. I think, you know, 
when we talk about the ego, the ego has its place, but it's no longer going to be our primary. The mental Absolutely. is not going to be our primary. At least that's the way they show me. Our heart is going to be the primary, but people yeah. are having a difficult time turning the dial, switching the dial. Yep. But, you know, the ego, I say, has multiple levels of levels of PTSD. Yeah. So it always reminds me, oh, don't stick your neck out and say that because, ouch, you uh -huh. know, or hey, don't go over there and help them because the last time you did that, someone really hated you for it, you know, yeah. or don't, don't do this, don't do that. So it dictates this protective mechanism mm -hmm. that isn't always truthful yeah. in a way to move forward. If you're working from the apparatus of my heart is first. And guess what? If I go over to help, it doesn't matter if they rejected me. I went over, I did what I needed to do. And I walk away with confidence, even though they rejected it. That's yeah. no reflection on me, mm -mm. Uh, you know, kind of thing. So the other thing too, I was thinking of when you were talking was boundaries. Yeah. You know, some people allow the external world to dictate their boundaries. Instead of having your own sense of, of boundaries, you allow like the 11th hour me mentality. I have a paper due at 11 o'clock on Monday night. Um, and I start on it at 10 o'clock at night because I've got to submit it because you didn't allow yourself to set boundaries for yourself. You allowed the time frame mm -hmm. to set the boundaries for you. And then you get this big adrenal rush and you think it's a power play mm -hmm. when actually it leads to burnout. Yeah. So I think really where we are at this point in time, I'd like to ask the question is the world is going to do what the world is going to do. And we didn't come here to just fall apart. We came here with a lot stronger tools you know, built in within this whole apparatus that we haven't even tapped into yet. Mm -hmm. So in sessions with you, I know it's very helpful because it shows you some of the previous things that may have occurred in a different turn and a twist of it that you don't remember. And it applies to the now, which then helps you take a better footprint to your next step in the today. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah, um, I actually, I the work that I do, I call spiritual psychology. Mm -hmm. And so you may have something like a repeated pattern. Um, you have a tendency to get into relationships that, that your partner takes advantage of you. And you are willingly let them do so because you're a people pleaser. And you want to make sure they stay happy and you need a relationship. You feel like you have to have somebody in your life. Well, that didn't just happen. And, you know, and people have a tendency to look at events that just happen that trigger us, you know, so for whatever reason, after that relationship finally reached it break, its breaking point, you recognize, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done that, or I should do some, something different, or this broke my heart, you know, whatever it may be, that specific event, that behavior that was that you're acting in of being the people pleaser, you know, trying to make sure that that person always gets what they're wanted, you know, and whatever it may be, you know, neglecting yourself, you know, most likely that came back from somewhere, either a childhood event, it may have been a situation that you were trying to please your father and your father wasn't ever satisfied. Maybe your parents fought a lot. And so you were the one that was a peacekeeper and you always wanted to be quiet. So there's, you know, these things that can occur through your lifetime that never just happen. They happen somewhere, or they started somewhere down the line that created this behavior. So what the Akashic Records can do is show us, me, my client, they'll go through me, will go to that time in the event that probably started this behavior. And by recognizing, and I'm just using this as an example, recognizing that my father was never satisfied with whatever I did. And he was one that would always say, you, you could have done better. So at that point, then begin to recognize, oh, this isn't what this isn't the issue with the last relationship I had. I have to go back and deal with my father. And the, that behavior and the belief systems that he ingrained in me because of the way that he treated me. So let's go back and unravel all of that 
and deal with that. And then you'll recognize how the chain reaction occurs to where once you can resolve that issue, then you see everything so much more clearer and you can recognize, oh, I don't need to hold on to the pain of this past relationship. I see why it was exactly why, why it ended the way it did and how I, I was learning a lesson that I needed to learn that goes all the way back to my childhood. So as we go through these sessions and we ask the specific questions about events, it helps us to unravel this programming that began from the beginning. It's almost, I always look at it as the onion, you know, and we always talk about having to peel the onion. Well, in normal psychology, you start with the outer, the outer layer of the onion and then go back to the core, but the Akashic records have the ability to go to the core and let's just jump to the core and get to it. Let's not have to go through all yes. the trauma of all yes. the layers. And so that's why I feel like the Akashic Records are so extremely beneficial. You know, it's so much more than just predicting the future or what past lives did I have. You know, there's a lot more to it that's intertwined in our behaviors and our patterns and our emotional beliefs and feelings you know, that they can pinpoint and they can help us to, to deal with on a different way than other resources can. Yeah. And you know, what's coming to mind right now is just to have self-forgiveness for all the things that may have gotten you to where you are in this moment. Mm -hmm. And there's no blame. It's just lessons. It's information. But the softer we can be with ourselves, uh, the more information we can allow to flow through. Yeah. And more acceptance we have and the more peace we bring within ourselves. And then we become the beacon of peace uh, when we're out amongst anyone, workers, yeah. family, friends, the grocery store. We're mm -hmm. just at a peaceful, peaceful place. Yeah. So before we close, Lisa, um, does the Akashic Records have anything that they would like to share with the group? What we want you to know is that every individual that is upon the earth at this particular time has meaning and purpose. We want you to recognize that the ability that you have as humans is to become fully connected to the soul's consistency that resides within you and the universal consciousness that is not only shared within you, but is also on the outside of you. When humans begin to recognize that they can shift the mind's belief systems to be more connected and united as one, they will begin to understand how to receive the information that's being provided to live a more coherent life that will create more peace and love. We want you to understand that as, as you go through this process as a human, you will soon become the, the light that is attracting all, all of the individuals that are needing the, the help, the assistance and the guidance in order to shift consciousness as well. And what I'm seeing is a, um, oh my gosh, what is the thing? Uh, it's the, the light, a lighthouse. The lighthouse. <laughs> light the house. beacon of light. <laughs> yes, it's the beacon of light, you know, that, that brings people to that light. And what we want you to understand is that the individuals that are transforming at this particular time are, are the first waivers. They are the ones that are shifting in their own consciousness in order to allow others to follow. We want you to know that there have been many that are on this specific path in order to become the teachers to others. And we choose you to, to hear our words clearly, allow yourself to let go of what once was and stand of, in the truth of the unconditional love that lies within you and within all things. This is who we are and this is who you are. When you can allow yourself to be free of the old thoughts, you'll begin to stand in the light and the truth of who you're meant to be in this specific moment. We honor you, we love you, and we guide you every second of the day and recognize that you are never alone as we are always with you. Beautiful. Yeah. So 
Y'all, when you make your appointment with Lisa, get your questions ready and be, <laughs> be, I, I suggest like the day before tuning into the energy, get your questions ready. And then the day of the session, go through and tweak them, redefine them because your guides will bring up other memories and other thoughts that may be a little bit more important than maybe the question you had, you know, yeah. written down, or maybe your hundred questions need to be condensed into 10. <laughs> I know I had fun with that. So, so it's just a, a word to the wise out there. When you make your session, Lisa's information will be in the description. If you haven't had a session, I would encourage you to do it. They're fun. They're enlightening. And it's just a guidance. There's just, um, there's just things in there that just kind of a light bulb residence that it's like, oh, oh, oh. And then some of it's like, what? I never thought of it that way kind of thing. So, and I consider myself a pretty smarty pants person. So even <laughs> I have a lot to learn. So it's all a lesson and it's fun. So Lisa, yeah. do you have any parting words um, for yourself, like just in general? Love you? yourself. Just learn to love yourself. You know, stop thinking about the outside world and what everybody's doing around you. Turn your focus in on you and really learn to love who you are as a human being. And that's the most significant thing you can do at this time. Thank you very much. I was on an elevator yesterday and I was letting people off in front of me, getting out of their way. And then there was a man with a walker and he took forever. And he goes, I'm so sorry. He goes, you're a very kind person. I said, I know, and it comes naturally. <laughs> And I did not get him off the elevator any faster. He had to stop and laugh. <laughs> but I made his day and it just fell out of my mouth. So loving yeah. yourself, being happy with who you are. Yeah. And don't define yourself by all the circumstances that are going on. Because again, the only dials you have control over are the ones within here. Yeah. And get out in nature and enjoy it. And just look at everything in its beautification as it is, even if it might look ugly to someone else. It's not yeah. how you need to perceive it because they say it's so. All right. Well, you stay put. We'll talk for a minute off camera, but say goodbye to everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs>